sure. Thank you. I know plays you good. <laughs> How are all you lovely people doing tonight? You guys are pretty. So, uh, my name is John Pugh. I own the house of Swing Clothing with my beautiful wife, Jessica, and our kid, lovely son, Hank. Um, and the house of Swing wouldn't be around if I didn't hike the Appalachian Trail, and I'll tell you why. At the end of this seven minutes, because I really have to pee, so this is going to go like seven minutes, maybe six minutes. So, it's going to be a quick one. All right. So back in 1999, I was uh, 29 years old. I had floundered through my 20s, as most people do, or as, as lots of people do. I was a semi-functional alcoholic, I believe. And uh, I've been thinking about doing the Appalachian Trail for 10 years, probably. That you know, high part of it every time, taking weeks off. Skipped school, got kicked out of school. And like, well, okay, I'm gonna take a, you know, a few weeks off and hike on the trail again. And um, so in 1999, I was uh, getting a divorce, which is lovely. And as I like, you know, I was going to be 20, I was going to be 30. And this is a good time, like take a, take a time out, like, you know, boop, take a time out, let's take breaks, to, like, like reevaluate what we're doing with ourselves. And uh, cause my dad passed away, he, he was 41, he had a heart attack, passed away, and, and I didn't plan to make 30, much less like, you know, I'm you know, mid 40s now, so. And uh, so that, you know, 29, 30 hits around, I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do? I didn't really plan, I had no contingency plan past 30. So I, um, we go for a, uh, I suit up my money, sold business, sold everything, sold my shit, sold my truck. Go riding a, riding a car to Maine. Most folks start in Georgia, I started in Maine because um, you do the northbound route on the, on the Appalachian Trail, it's more social, a lot more people, lots, lots more crowds, that kind of stuff, and I was not in the mood to be talking to anybody. Um, so, Riding there for two two days with my then girlfriend and her her mom and her German grandmother in this sweet Mercedes Benz and get dropped off up there and they're leaving at uh, Mount Katahdin and you know it's really quiet once once everybody leaves and you're like you're thinking you know, the dust is sailing you're like what the fuck did I just get myself into so I had no idea what the hell I was doing I, mean, I, I hiked and all that kind of stuff I kind of knew all the technical gear all that kind of stuff I had. My little pack, my backpack, this is my backpack I took. This, you won't find fine quality craftsmanship like this just anywhere. So, um, so this is a Kelty pack I tore apart and re-sewed. And this was my uh, shirt that I wore every day. It's the best blue shirt in the world. And um, it, so I, I think it's shrunk in the closet or something like that. I'm not really sure why that, but uh, yeah. Like every day and every time you get like funny things like, I don't know, big hole in the back and all that kind of stuff. So that's, I'll never go for this shirt. So I go up there in my pack and you know, we're walking along, we're walking, go, go the biggest ascent, going down the biggest ascent on Katahdin. And about two weeks into this trip, I'm, uh, I'm hiking along with this, this young lady and, and I begin to realize that, you know, we start July 1st, I'm thinking like, I'm gonna be done in, in Halloween, right? Like five months. About two weeks into the trip, I'm like, I may have made a tactical error with my choice of companion for this trip, so. Uh, so that goes long, goes long for another couple weeks, and three or three weeks, or another four weeks, and then, you know, she gets off, she gets on, she gets off, she gets on. And finally, I'm like, it's, everything kind of goes, blows up, goes to hell. And um, so I'm up in, uh, God, where's it, Jersey? And then I got higher than that. I was in New Hampshire. I'm like, wow, I'm really late, I'm really behind, I'm really broke. I'm writing a newspaper column for the Greensboro News and Records, so everybody knows I'm up here, and, and like, well, shit, I need to start hauling ass, and so you're walking along, you're walking along, and the Appalachian Trail, is, it's pretty, it's pretty simple, it's not really a wild trail, there's, there's shelters all the time, there's this, it's really well maintained, you, know, you, you almost have to work to get lost in this thing, it's basically like, if you're walking along, you walk along, you walk along, you know, like you're walking to Slims, you're like, this amount, walk to Slims, and then you walk back, and you do that, like, 18,000 times, that's pretty much like what the Appalachian Trail is all about. <laughs> so, walk along, walk along, walk along, walk along. And I get down to uh, kind of Parisburg, Virginia. This is like five months into the trip. It's Thanksgiving in Parisburg. I don't know if you've been, anybody been to Parisburg? Not a lot going on in Parisburg, Virginia. So it's cold, it's November, I'm freezing my ass off. I didn't have my winter gear on me. I'm hiking in, I was prototyping some sandals for Chaco, so. Um, and like so, I'm cold, and 
And I almost quit the trail at that point because I'm, I'm in this hostel and they'd already closed, but let me stay for a couple of days. And um, you had to do a lot of soul searching. Like, you know, I quit, I bailed, you know, what's it going to be like? I mean, was it all me? Blah, blah, blah. So I keep on going, had my winter stuff sent to me. Um, another month and a half of walking along back and forth the slams 18,000 times. And I finished in the middle of January, which I thought was going to be done like Halloween, and play my guys. And then January was quite brisk. For, you know, the little Appalachians and the Smokies, there's like three foot drifts and walking along. Because Slims in the wintertime is really fucking cold. And you're like, I can walk, I can do the snow. When I finished that trip, I made a deal with myself because I'm 30, I didn't know what that meant. Like, hey, I just did ET, that's cool. And I, um, I made a deal like every five years, I was going to do something cool, right? Because, like, I'm not by nature a goal center. You know, I'm not a go getter by nature. I'm more I'm like a I'm a sit on my asser much not like a goal <laughs> center. So every five years it keeps it, you know it should keep me honest, right? So fast forward a few months, I got an offer to apply to graduate school in Ohio, which I I didn't know shit about Ohio at that point. It's 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 over there and we're down here and they're giving me some money to go to school. So I, I got nothing to do, man. I'm just, you know, I'm a hiker at that point. So I go to Ohio and um, I build a yurt on a hundred, like a thousand acres for a hundred bucks a month. I build this shack, this yurt out of straw bales. And uh, so I'm living in this yurt and going to grad school. And my wife, my, well, my, this, this young lady, Jessica, comes, joins our program about a semester after I started. And, you know, we hang out in classes, whatever. And apparently, like, she's like, the dude in the shack, that's the man for me. <laughs> so we're starting to hang out. We, we're leading, a, yeah, I have a degree in leisure recreation, leisure services management, and a, and a master's in adventure recreation. So if you have any problem with your leisure, let me know. We can, we can work out something. We can consult you, all right? We'll plug if the shirt thing doesn't work out. <laughs> So we're leading trips every weekend. We're like kayaking, we're backpacking, we're canoeing, we're going on these long trips. So we're in the Okefenokee Swamp. And the Okefenokee is, a, is beautiful. It's really cool. If you get a chance to go down there, bring bug repellent, there's a shitload of bugs. And so we're going along, and we're driving back to Ohio, sunny Ohio, sunny, sunny Ohio. Ohio is not sunny, I found out when I was there for two years. I still need to get my two tears tattooed to my eyes for my two years of in, in Ohio. <laughs> so we're driving back to Ohio from the Okefenokee Swamp and we're looking at the Atlas because at that point, you know, we didn't have like really cool phones or anything. Like you had like, you know, we should actually shared a really shitty phone. And um, so we're looking at the Atlas and there's this big blue line right down the middle of the, of the, of the United States. It's like the Mississippi River. And we finished the Okefenokee like, we could totally paddle much longer than two, three, four days. Let's do that. Sounds totally reasonable. So we're into grad school. We, we finished that, finished our master's degree. We come back down to state, start a PhD program and uh, in recreation, again, the recreation is a theme in my life. Not a, you know, anyway. So we're a couple of years into that thing. We're like, we're going to do this thing. So we were, we'll hook up with the Audubon Society and we're going to like save the world and stuff. So we, we got a bunch of sponsors and we got all our stuff together. I traded my backpack, my, my little backpack, for a, for a carbon fiber canoe paddle, which was really sweet. And um, we drive up there for three days, driving this big, big canoe that Grant Dorick had hit, hit loaned us. And uh, Grant Provision Company. And we, you know, it's so like, it's me and my girlfriend and my girlfriend's mom and a buddy of ours, we're all driving along, and there's two dogs in the car, and there's a, and uh, his wife. Yeah, there's a whole ton of us going through. Anyways, we get up, the, get up there to Atasca, in the middle of nowhere. If you want to find the middle of nowhere, go up to Minnesota, take a lift, and you're in the Atasca. That's where the middle of nowhere is at. And we unload the canoe, and it had like your numbers on there. Like, I totally didn't have my shit together for this thing. I mean, like, we got sponsorships, I was writing doing this newspaper column, we're doing this press stuff, and. And I pretend like you know what the hell I was doing, but I was totally winging this whole thing because that's, you know, that's how I pretty much do everything, including this talk I'm doing right now. Um, so we get up in the, we get up there, we put all the stuff in the canoe, we put it on the dock, we're loading all the shit in the canoe, and, 
and then we like put the canoe in the water, and the water is only like the, the Mississippi River when it starts. It's like this little. It starts from a pond, and I'm shit you not. This the river is only like like that deep, and like and I'm not even kidding. It's like like that wide, like six feet wide, whatever. It's a creek. It's like like a little creek you go to the slims. There's a creek in the. It's like that. So, <laughs> so we get in, in the canoe. She's in the front. Am I in the back because, you know, gender roles and all that kind of stuff. So, and we get, we're paddling along, we're paddling along, and about a hundred yards down the river, we realize that, you know, we've done, we've done a bunch of backpacking, we've led a bunch of trips, and she's got this whole first aid stuff, and we, she, she's a great kayaker, and I'm a marginal canoeist. And we realized that we had never actually been in a damn canoe together, ever, 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 ever. So, that was some negotiation, to like, you know, how the hell are we going to steer for 2,000 miles down the steam river? So trying to get that whole thing worked out. And there were some, some moments of reflection that people two miles away, because water, you know, sound carries on the water, and you're like, and like, you know, you get it worked out. You get it worked out. So it's raining like hell. We're in flood stage all the way through Minnesota. We paddle along in our canoe, and we're soaking wet all the time. And, you know, we get off, and like, in Minnesota, it's like 40 degrees and there's like, you're getting bit by mosquitoes because the damn things wear fleece. Like, there's like little grandmothers that have, they're knitting like little tiny fleece sweaters for the mosquitoes in Minnesota and get bit. Some bitches. And so we keep on doing that. We go by the arch at St. Louis, which is a huge arch and it's you know, early July. It's 105 degrees and we've just paddled a thousand miles and I'm thinking, Holy shit, we still have another thousand miles to go. <laughs> and so you keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, you paddle along, paddle along. That's how you paddle, you're like you know, little tiny strokes like that. And, um, and we, we take we take a we hang a right at the Shefalaya River, because if the if the Mississippi had its own own brain, own volition, it would hop its shores and go down the Shefalaya basin and bounce out of Morgan City and so they going down. And as it stands, it already takes like 30% of the the float. If you want any more academic bullshit, I got tons of facts, man. I got all that stuff. I did a master's thesis on motives of Appalachian trail hikers, so meet me after this. We'll talk about this stuff. Um, so we hit the we hit the Gulf of Mexico, and we we're there. We throw. We, the, somebody gave us a golf ball, like 1,500 miles up, like take it to the to the Gulf. I'm like, hell yeah, dude, I'm taking it to the Gulf. So we're throwing the golf ball in the in the river. We pour beer in there that somebody else gave us, and we're like, shit, now what? So, um, so we paddle back to Morgan City, and we get there, and we give all our food away to these kids that are on by the docks, and, you know, and it, I wrote a manuscript afterwards, and I flamed out of school, and end up, end up doing all this stuff. Anyway, but I guess we're all, we're talking, all bringing all this together. What the hell does it all mean, right? So when I, when I did the AT, I was a total mess, complete wreck. I picked up this name, Johnny Swink. I was playing some gigs, and I picked up Johnny Swink. So I was going to be Johnny Swink on the trail, and I wrote the you know, column under Johnny Swink, and I, I kind of kept that. So I'm playing gigs, and I'm writing, and doing all that kind of thing. I went into Johnny Swink, but I was hiking that, or I was paddling the river, and I kept on doing that. And then you know, I was playing some more gigs, and I went to register the business name because I had sold like five shirts. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm a business. <laughs> and they're like, what's, what's your business name? And I'm like, House of Swank, dude, lay it down. Let's lay it on me, House of Swank, that's what it is. So that's how the how House of Swank thing came along. So I was, it wouldn't have been around if I hadn't done the AT because doing that and taking a risk and taking a step back and looking at your life and realizing that life is full of opportunities if you just get off your ass, off the couch, and try something. You know, it's not, there's not this linear path. There's lots of paths. And there's sometimes those paths go weaving way, and sometimes you like end up in the, in the you have to turn around trying another different path. But just taking a risk and trying that was the big, for me, was the biggest thing I got out of all these trips. I mean, you know, there's all the, the challenge and there's, you know, 
is trying to escape from reality for a while and trying to go on towards something. Those are all big, meaningful things, and those are all, those are all something. And anyone that says they don't do some of these trips because it's an ego boost is totally, totally full of shit because it's really cool. We feel like, AT, yeah, hell yeah. But the big thing for me was taking a step back, selling all the shit and wiping the slate clean and starting something new. And if I don't give anything else, that's what I would like to give to you guys. If you just, little stuff, big stuff, you don't have to sell all your shit, you don't sell your house, but just trying something and make you a better person or the world a better place and just take a part of your little pond and throw a rock in it and watch the things go out. That's what the big thing for trips does to me. And that's all I got. So thanks a lot for coming out.